project that we're going to show the behind the scenes of um, a pendant that we made. So this is a pendant. It is actually called the Lover's Eye, and this is a trend of kind of like a spin-off of miniature portraits that we've seen in jewelry in like the 17, 16, 1800s. And so we did our own spin on it. We also worked with uh, Roxy Peroxide, a very cool Montreal artist. Yeah, we're gonna show all the behind the scenes of how it was made from beginning to end. So right before we get started, smash that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and let's jump into it. All right, so let's do a little backstory of the Lover's Eye and where it came from. Um, just to give you a little bit of like context, because it's very romantic. It was actually came from the Prince of Wales, King George IV. Yeah, King George IV. And so he was madly in love with a woman called Maria. She was not deemed fit to marry him. And so he had actually proposed to her. She had declined. And second time around, instead of proposing to her in a traditional way, he actually had commissioned a painting of his eye on a pendant and had given it to her. This was really interesting because miniaturist portraits have always existed, you know, in jewelry as a whole, whether it be landscapes, whether it be certain objects or uh, portraits, but the element of only having an eye this was really kind of new. We also have videos on sentimental jewelry that I'll link down below and we go more into depth with this, but the dating scene at the time was very, very strict. You couldn't necessarily just date or court whoever you wanted, whenever you wanted. There was certain etiquettes to respect. And so in giving a piece of jewelry with just the eye, I mean, nobody knows whose eye it is, you know? It's like this kind of like mystery of like only the holder knows who it belongs to. So it's like extra cool. Being a lover of history and being a lover of jewelry history and jewelry as a whole, I really wanted to kind of do our own spin-off on this piece. Alright, so now that we've touched on the history, let's go more into like, the production side of things. So we really want to have our own spin-off of uh, The Lover's Eye. I really want to also incorporate my own style. So that's why right now the pendant, if you look at it, there's a mix of many different things. So the very first thing that we did was we actually had to have the Mother of Pearl custom cut. So if you look at the pendant, the eye is actually painted on Mother of Pearl. If you don't know what that is, it's the inside of a shell. So when you open a shell or a clam, you have the pearl, but the shells themselves are actually used in jewelry all the time. They're used making buttons, making different uh, piano keys back in the day, and they have a very beautiful luster to them. And so we actually cut out um, an oval, a slightly rectangular oval, to be painted on. Because traditionally back in the day, they would have used ivory, they would have used tortoise shell. Um, I wasn't going to use that for like obvious reasons. One, it's like definitely illegal, and two, it's just not ethical to use ivory anymore. Mother of Pearl is quite soft. I think it has a hardness of between 2.5 to 4.5, so it's not something that you necessarily want to have on a ring. But for a pendant, it's okay. You know what I mean? You just have to be careful. We had a custom cut. Like normally I wouldn't necessarily recommend custom cutting Mother of Pearl, but I really wanted to have something very specific, so we did it. Hi, my name is Roxane. I'm a painter. This is what I do, and I come from Montreal. So what inspires you to do your work? I guess I'm well I'm self-taught I painted for about 10 years with acrylics and I switched with the oils recently and it's been uh, it's been a real game changer I heard uh, that you can just get better uh, results with oils and I was terrified of it and then I just decided to do it and it worked out well around the eye we use sapphire garnets with black rhodium. So if you're not familiar with Savrite, I love it. I think it's a great accent stone. It has a very, very, very vivid, rich green color. And it has a lot more pop and a lot more flair, in my opinion, than emeralds. And they're not necessarily less expensive. And when you're working with tiny, tiny little um, pavé, I really wanted the color to be consistent. And it's a lot easier to find a very nice quality sapphire um, with nice clarity and nice brilliance than it is to find emeralds. Sometimes they still have a lot of like a little bit of fogginess and so for me it was really just a preference to use this. So we had a pavé set. On the pavé setting we used black rhodium. So black rhodium is the opposite of white rhodium. White rhodium is usually what we use on engagement rings to make it that very crisp crisp white. 
So black wording is exactly the opposite. It's really to black and out, to add certain accents, to add eye-catching features in certain areas. So we really wanted to do that to make the green pop and to add kind of like a contour to embellish the eye. I think it turned out great. If you actually look at this production scene here, there are different ways of like dipping, like rhodium. So like you can dip it, you can paint it. We painted it because we really only wanted to touch the surface of like the rim. I didn't want to get it anywhere else. This blue stuff that you see on the pendant right here, this is actually kind of like an ink, like a, it, it covers the surface that you don't want to be in contact with the rhodium. So if you have tiny little details that you want to blotch out, then you can literally like paint it on so that the rhodium will not stick to that specific surface and will go around it. And so we basically put it all over the leaves to ensure that they did not come into contact with any rhodium. And then obviously, as you see here, we simply dip it in acetone, dip it in the, the ultrasound, and it's easily removed. Around the pave, we have vines. So vines is something that I personally like that's really within my style of a design that I, I always try to have, um, is organic movement within a piece. I am obsessed with the contrast between solid objects and movement. So I really want to have kind of like vine work. It also felt like having this kind of like foliage made it look a little bit like vintage inspired. So if you look really closely, the, the leaves are actually high polished and then the vines are, um, we sandblasted them. So basically we actually insert it into like this little like box and we hit it with high pressurized sand and it creates kind of like little, um, indents, very micro indents all over the surface of the meadow where the, the sand is hitting the gold. So that really gives like a really nice contrast between the vines and the leaves themselves. And then the rest of the piece is high polish. Of course I'm talking about the high polish now, but um, just to like backtrack, all of the polishing and everything needs to be done before the pearls are set, before the rhodium is set. These are really the final touches. We have to really like prepare the piece before we can move on to those extra steps. So once the piece was painted, we actually covered it in resin. So, I mean, this is a very ornate piece. No one's going to be wearing this like on the regular. It's not like an engagement ring that you never take off, you know. But still, we wanted the paint to be resilient. And so we actually covered it in like resin. So it's a very clear resin. We basically coated it right in a clear kind of like liquid and then we harden it with UV rays. So this is going to really ensure the durability of the paint so that it won't get water damaged, you won't have to worry about wearing it as much. I'm so happy with the way that the pendant turned out. It looks so cool and so bizarre. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'd love to know your feedback, what you guys think about it. Is it weird, is it cool? Um, this was a really fun project for us. If you'd like to see more projects or request projects, always just, you know, leave us a comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.